This is where the fun begins. General Kenobi! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Jedi Knights, the official Star Wars podcast of Joy Clicks. I'm your host, Christian Buckley, joined by my chewy Mike Connors for episode 53. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. Uh, ready to talk a little bit more about Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Uh, ready to talk a little bit more about some of the Star Wars news uh, that's been that's been happening in this world. Uh, but I don't know. And what about you? Uh, I am ready. It is. We are in the thick of Mandoctober. Uh, we are continuing our rewatch of the Mandalorian season one. We're gonna go into depth on our. Year later thoughts on episodes three and four after we get through some headlines. Yes. Um, but before we get to any of that, Mike, we're going to kick the show off the way we normally do with From the Jedi Archives, our weekly highlight of Star Wars lore, character information, anything we can pull from the sacred texts of the Jedi that is Wikipedia. Uh, Mike, why don't you kick us off this week? I think I went last week first, so why don't you? Uh, you know, we always look at Wikipedia. But we never, we never really take a step back, and we never look at what is Wikipedia, and how did it come to be. So my Wikipedia article for this week is Wikipedia. Uh, it's the Wikipedia article on the website itself. Uh, so funny enough, it was created by two fans. Uh, so yeah, it's just it's just basically two guys who created it. it I think it's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it was created back in like 2004, actually 2005. Sorry. Uh, and it's basically just like become the encyclopedia, obviously. Um, it's a fascinating Wikipedia article. It's very long. Oh. I wonder if I wonder if the guys who created Wikipedia just like sat and wrote this cro- this chronology of their website. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so nice. That's an interesting poll. Uh, is there any fun fact on there? Is there a, is there a column of fun yeah, facts uh, or something? I was hoping that there would be. Uh, okay, influences on canon, Jedi Exile. Uh, so, hold on. That was a game, right? Okay, me. All right. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, so yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I can't really. I can't really come up with one right now. You're putting me on the spot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I nah nah. It's good. That is. A, that's a good poll. We've been pulling from Wikipedia for so long that it is. It's do some respect, you know? Yes. I mean, it seems as though there are influences on canon. Mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with these, so it seems like it seems like I'd be really bad at explaining them right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so just, yeah, there you go. Go look it up yourself. Nice. Very cool. Um, my Wikipedia article, I accidentally closed out of it. <laughs> so let me just pull that back up oh. real quick. Uh, oh man! All right. Well, you know, it says right here. It says my Jeetan. Before given the name Lerman, my Jeetan began as a fanon. I guess that's a fan canon oh, okay. nickname on Wikipedia for the nameless natives of my Jeeto. Later, this term was adopted in the Essential Atlas, which I guess I don't think is. I don't know. I don't think that's canon anymore since it came out in two thousand nine. So. Uh, fair points. Um, well. Mine is interesting. I told you before we start recording that this is like a a poll. It is a cut. I'm going to do my best to pronounce the name because I don't know how the proper pronunciation is. Uh, But we will go into depth. For Kaimane Jai Shilal's great-grandmother. She was a Kalish female, a member of the Kolk Pravis, the united army of the planet Kali. The Kalish eventually became the great grandmother of the warlord, Kamein Jai Shilal. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Mike or listeners, interesting. Kamein, yeah, Kaimain, p- potentially, uh, would later become General Grievous. Interesting. Okay, so I I actually have a question on this. You might know the answer. Like General Grievous's background, I know like he was like a warrior from that planet or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, and like you know he loved like that woman and stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm slightly familiar with the fact that Grievous had a body and feelings. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, is that canon or is that? I I don't know. 
I don't know. Because the thing is, I think there's a Black Series figure, but there's Black Series for Legends, so this is not really indicative. But I think there is a Black Series figure of Kamein Jai Shilao, who is human or uh, fleshy General Grievous. Right. So, potentially yeah. Legends. I don't know. Um, the only source of the Great Grandmother comes from the story of General Grievous, Lord of War. Uh, which was on StarWars.com, but has since been removed. So it's probably not canon. Yeah, interesting. I, I don't know. I just know that he had, like, this extensive backstory where he, like, loved this woman. Mm-hmm. And, like, somehow, like, she died and it was, like, his fault. And it, like, turned him into, like, this monster. I don't know. I just wonder if that's still canon. Uh, I don't really know. That's an interesting pull, though. Very random. <laughs> yeah, I, I stumbled across that one and I was like, you know what? I feel like we have to talk about that. Because when do we talk about grandmas <laughs> in Star Wars, let alone great-grandmas? Yeah, I, I guess we never, right? Uh, if you think about it, though, uh, if you think about it, if you think about it, uh, Shmi uh-huh. is Kylo Ren's great-grandma. <laughs> Yeah, that was the only one. I was going to say the exact same thing. If we want to talk about Great Grandmas in Star Wars, it's just Shmi. Or wait, Literally. no, that would be... Oh, Ben Solo, you're correct. Yes, okay, yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. But, um... So, <laughs> I used his emo name. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that does it for Jedi Archives for the week. So why don't we dive into a few news topics. There are a few ones for the week but there are some interesting ones um let's kick off with this so a while back one rahul Kohli, television actor uh you may know him from i zombie cw's show which uh i was a pretty big fan of it was a comfort show uh huge fan mike of psych the tv program psych uh you like psych yes but psych ended uh like a few years ago and then i was like man i really miss having that type of detective show and i zombie got very very close to it and uh rahu Kohli was a supporting character um on the show honestly probably main character but i think he's very funny uh he's pretty active in the uh internet fandom of like games and stuff like that he's i think he streams sometimes But a while back, he teased the fact that he would, one, want to, and two, is actively pursuing the role of live-action Ezra Bridger from Rebels. Oh, wow. And... Wow. I've seen this guy around. I've mm -hmm. seen, like, what he looks like and everything. Yeah. So, continue what you're going to say, though. So, recently, I sent you this tweet, uh, I think yesterday. He, He tweeted out a picture of him holding a Coke... Uh, he has a Lucasfilm hoodie on. In the background, there is a paused scene of Star Wars Rebels with Ezra Bridger on his laptop, like slightly out of frame, but you can see half of it. And the tweet says, I'm currently alone filming a new show and couldn't celebrate the yeah. release of Bly Manor, which is the new- newest program he's in, with my friends or family. Uh, treat myself to a Coke. Thank you all so much for watching. Cheers. But, like, clearly he's teasing the Star Wars stuff, right? Like, that's the joke of it, but... yeah. This could mean anything. This could just be him trying to, like, strum up some conversation where there's actually nothing. But I thought it would be worth pointing out, considering he seems like a fan favorite for the people who have been thrown around in terms of portraying Ezra. And, uh... Sure. I think he's good. I'd like to see him. I mean, I think he has, like, the aesthetic. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, he definitely looks kind of like uh, Ezra Bridger, in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, like, someone... Maybe, like, older Ezra Bridger. Uh, but yeah it makes me wonder like what is he filming right now do we have any intel on that so I don't know for sure what he'd be filming also somebody just started up a lawnmower right outside so I apologize for that but um, Bly Manor is the recent thing he was in and um, that is okay the like the, the follow up to the haunting of Hill House I think from Netflix Uh, yeah right right so I, I don't know what he's acting. I'm, not, fam- I'm yeah. not familiar, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not but, 100% yeah. sure what he'd be filming right now. Um, so just thought I'd throw that okay. out there. Yeah, I mean, interesting. I, I like I like you said. I think he'd be a good fit 
for that character. Mm-hmm. So uh, he definitely looks like him. Yeah, I'll ask you this, Mike: if if he is Ezra, wh- where do you think he- we'd see him? Do you think this is a Kenobi thing? Do you think, like timeline wise, where would it be? Would it be him appearing in Mando season three? Would it be him? in this new untitled star wars show that's going to be coming out not a not a kenobi thing Mm -hmm. definitely definitely not a kenobi thing right uh because i I don't want to spoil rebels but because of events that uh but i do think i do think just because the actor who they're talking about playing him just seems older that he would also be older too. Like Ezra Bridger would be older in the portrayal. Mm -hmm. So I would say probably sometime, maybe like Cassian, consider that. I don't know. Okay. Uh, That's, that's where I'm thinking. Interesting. Well, um, What what do you think? I think Manda would make sense. I think if Ahsoka is getting a, a series with Rosario Dawson playing Ahsoka, then maybe he shows up there um okay yeah i wasn't really considering after that either Mm -hmm. yeah so you're right right. not 100 percent sure potentially future news uh i would like to see him in the star wars universe personally same but uh speaking of star wars on television we got more info on kenobi because ewan mcgregor recently had an appearance over zoom on the graham norton show you know that uk show where like the orange set he's yeah man he's on that show all the time yeah. it seems or i've like watched i've watched like some youtube clips of him like as a guest on that show with like i don't know is that the one where they always bring the lightsabers out yeah. and stuff yeah that's that yeah thing. yeah yeah that is where that clip's from uh yeah you're right whenever i end up seeing clips from that show i think it's just ewan mcgregor clips like occasionally it's a couple other people from the area but yeah it's for sure most of the mind shares him uh but he was being or maybe that's just because maybe that's just because we're american sure yeah i i doubt people in the uk are watching conan i don't even watch conan but (laughs) exactly yeah though conan's pretty funny i like yeah conan's all right um so he's interviewed on the Graham Norton show, uh, basically 100% confirming, as of right now, Kenobi is beginning shooting in March. This was kicked around here or there, I believe, but, you know, because of COVID, because of delays of everything and anything, it wasn't really sure, and I don't think it's still 100% sure now, because anything could happen, right? Like, Batman to delay shooting a week after it kicked off because the league got COVID, right? Like, it was... Anything can happen right now, but from Kenobi himself, they are beginning shooting March 2021. Now, my first question to you, do you think we see anything from this show in the year 2021? Yes, yes. I think uh, I think I was literally just about to say, if they're shooting this show in March, man, that gives them a long time to finish up shooting. It doesn't take that long to shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you go in there with a plan. You know, they they could do it pretty pretty fast. Yeah. Like- so like, so I mean, like then they'd have the entire summer, and like you know, hell, even like the fall. Mm-hmm. To, to like just work on the show and like get their six like five or six episodes just like tip top shape and release it sometime 2021 if not 2021 like early 2022 mm-hmm. but i mean and, and the things can go wrong or i could be wrong right. i don't know i don't know i'd like to know what you think so a post or shooting a show like any sort of big shoot and again we're assuming this is going to be a a sizable shoot even if it is on sets because of the weight behind it right um like there's there's a certain expectation when you hear the obi-wan kenobi solo story and i I think it's fair to assume they take three months to shoot it 
because I think that's like for blockbusters that's usually the time allotted uh, I think it's fair to view this in a similar sort of camp considering it's a limited series probably longer episodes than Mando but like I think it's fair to th- it's like safe to think that I think um, okay all right post you know more about this than I do honestly sure so. yeah uh, post production I- I'm really curious I haven't like looked into announcements and then releases of Mando season one or two really specifically but I'm, I am I wonder how much legwork is eliminated because of the way they shoot with the uh, 360 screen sets. Yeah, the future tech. Yeah, so that might like considerably reduce post-production. But what I want to offer to you, because you brought up potentially 2021, I think we at least see, at the very least, I so- think we get like set uh, like an an official picture of him as obi-wan grayed up a little bit or like uh, maybe a teaser trailer but at most you know it'd be hilarious what because i'm with you i think early 2022 is pretty realistic uh you know how just because we all love obi-wan we all love you and mcgregor obi-wan and he has sort of like an internet fame in that role totally how many times have you seen uh like on facebook it's like people are afraid to share jesus and like it's at the joke thing and it's like obi-wan from episode two <laughs> yeah 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 what <laughs> what if we get just the second coming obi-wan's back and it's a christmas miracle that like end of december we get the first episode of kenobi and then we kick things off again like the end of uh january or something i i would love it honestly i've seen that meme done with Qui-Gon too yeah which is, uh, Qui-Gon as he's like dressed for his Tatooine visit mm-hmm. uh so so yeah there's that but yeah no I'd love to see I'd love to see that like him look like that yeah like all sanded up like mm-hmm. just kind of like like I'd lo- I just want to see what he looks like mm-hmm. and what it, do I- they got what do they got going on yeah and it's funny you mentioned that because in this interview he also talked about um not necessarily super in depth, but just talking about how he really studied Alec Guinness and his work to prep for Obi Wan originally. Um, this was a yeah. interesting detail where he said he watched a film um, that Alec Guinness did as a younger man, just to sort of see what he like carried himself like when he would have been younger around Ewan's age as prequel Obi Wan, right? So just like sort of compare what alec guinness at age 62 would have been like however many years ago when he was a younger guy so one yeah, i thought that was interesting um but they I'm also surprised but, mm-hmm. i'm surprised he didn't do that like what when he was filming like the prequels oh no no, no, no. Just... that's that's what he did that's sorry that's what he was like talking about in terms of studying uh, him um he uh, did that for the prequels but that was also spawning off the conversation of just the fact that he's maybe a little bit of a reach, but they were talking about how he's like, oh, you're much closer in age now to how old Alec Guinness was when he shot uh, the character in the, like, where you're stepping into. And there's still, like, a 12-year age gap between how old Ian McGregor is now and how old Alec Guinness was at the start of A New Hope. But 12 years? Yeah. Dude, Alec Guinness was, like, just an old-looking guy. Like, yeah he was 62 he was just old looking dude mm-hmm. he looks like he's like at least a hunch like <laughs> in in episode four you know yeah he <laughs> or was... maybe they just like maybe they just overdid it i don't know <laughs> well because i think um in a new hope he's wearing a hairpiece i think oh that would explain it yeah i think he's just bald i don't know he still looks really, really, really old. No, he looks just in the fa- in the face even. Yeah, he looks very aged in uh, the original trilogy. But yeah, I just thought it was a fun interview. You know, like there's always fun little clips that come out of whenever Ewan McGregor pops up on that show. Like Mike mentioned the the lightsaber bit from a while back. But March, uh, are you are you putting your chips on that staying or? Uh, you know, Christian, uh, 
I have a saying. I I don't really I don't really uh. I say I say what I don't know, right? And so, the way that these things work, movies, production of movies and TV shows, especially one of this caliber, I'm not familiar with it. Uh, it seems as though you have more insight into this. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're telling me that 2021 seems unrealistic, I'll probably just defer to you on that. But I would love to see something from it in 2021, and I hope that I hope that you're wrong, Christian. Oh, I hope I'm wrong too. I think, but like, seriously, I 100%, I think at the least, we get to see him in character. Like, if it's a screen test, if it's something that, like, the Star Wars Instagram page posts up of, like, a 20 second video of him doing, like, a lighting test. Like, I think we get something like that. And it's like, see you spring 2022 or something like that. Like, I think we for sure will get a look at. uh, We'll, We'll get something. Yeah for sure um like i said very light news week there's one last thing um it's about the star wars high republic we do know officially what the crawl will be now for this publishing initiative beginning with light of the jedi i will read it the galaxy is at peace ruled by the glorious republic and protected by the noble and wise jedi knights as a symbol of all that is good the republic is about to launch Starlight beacon into the far reaches of the outer rim. The new space station will serve as a ray of hope for all to see. But just as a magnificent renaissance spreads throughout the Republic, so does a frightening new adversary. Now the guardians of peace and justice must face a threat to themselves, the galaxy, and the force itself. That's it. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um... It's not it's not like the most riveting thing I've ever heard. Yeah, remember how uh when we were going through the films for this podcast yeah. and we like specifically highlighted the crawl for like every episode. And we we're like this is a good one. This one's like this one's whatever. Yeah, because they all set the scene, you know? Yeah, like this just feels like eh, you know, like it feels it's a, yeah. like it's a bit too broad, <laughs> you know? It's true. It really, it's really true. Uh, it, it does seem a little broad. I think like the question is: so is this going to be the crawl to everything? Is that how it's going to work? Like, so I guess it's just like to set the scene. You know, like I don't know if this is going to be. I don't. Okay. I doubt this is the crawl for every book. You know, because like Master and Apprentice had a crawl. All right. Um. But yeah, this is how they're setting the tone before we get into the book that's supposed to set the tone for um, this whole initiative. Uh, are you still well, looking forward to that? I I am looking forward to that. And if I'm not mistaken, you know, I think both of us read the, uh, like, I think it was like the prologue that they released for the for Light of the Jedi. Correct. Yes, we talked about it on the show, actually. It was the, um, the like, commercial yeah. cruise that went to hell and like everybody died right i th- is that starlight beacon i'm pretty sure that like there is like there is i think i think it says it was like starlight beacon and i think that that's like the main event that kind of like triggers all of this is like the destruction of that so potentially i don't remember because i remember it was like an all old right. ship and then starlight beacon i think is that satellite that was in the concept art that we were like, oh, at the top of it, it looks like the Jedi Temple Council. All right, never mind. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. <laughs> um, I, I, will, I will like look this up as we as we still discuss. Uh, so so continue. Yeah, it's um, I think COVID did a number on my anticipation for the High Republic. I think once we start rolling with it, I'm gonna be back in, but. Like, it, it just feels like it's it's something that exists and it's still coming, you know? It got delayed because, again, 2020, but, yeah, I'll, I'll get more excited yeah. the closer we get, I think. No, I, I, I'm still excited. I just, I'm just interested to, like, read some of this, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I, I'm excited to, like, get back into, like, Star Wars books a little bit, and, like, I think this is, this is going to be a good way for, for me to get back into that whole, that whole arena. Absolutely. So. 
Yeah. Um, well, we uh, do have one last thing to touch on in terms of news. Uh, Star Wars Squadrons came out last week. Neither of us have played it y- yet. Uh, I also co-host a show with one Kevin Diaz, the JoyClicks Games cast over on youtube.com slash JoyClicks. And in the first like 25, 30 minutes or so, we talk about games we're playing. Kevin uh, bought, played through, and beat Star Wars Squadrons. Uh, he's also yeah. a big Star Wars fan. He gave me some impressions. But most importantly, Mike, I he unsold me, I think. Unsold you? Yeah. Meaning he, like you're not interested? Yeah, you know why? Why? You know how for so long you and I were like, man, I know it wouldn't make a difference to anybody except us, but if it was about Alphabet Squadron, we'd be hyped, right? Yeah. The in the game they throw shade at Alphabet Squadron. No, they don't. Yes. He Are told you me. Serious? Yeah, because the thing is, I told him beforehand. I was like, "Hey, yeah, we read this book. I know, like, if you're looking to get into the Star Wars books, this is a really good one. I liked it a lot. Um, yeah. And if the game I think was about them, I'd be in there with you day one. But I was like, if there's a if there's an Easter egg, just let me know." Because it could change my excitement. And then on the show, he was like, yeah, they trash talk Alphabet Squad. And they're like, oh, they're not good enough for this mission. We don't need Alphabet Squad. We need, like, Valorant Squad or whatever. Oh, my God. That is so lame. I know. I really don't want to. I don't want to play this game at all now, man. How could you trash? How could you trash my team like that? I know. It, uh, It upset me. That's bad. Um, Chas would have none of that. No no but he uh yeah he thought it was all right uh a big star wars fan he liked Balfour too a lot he likes jedi fallen order a lot uh he thought it was like okay um i think he was a little underwhelmed by the story content because he said there wasn't much um in terms of like exploring the command ship it's like he said it felt like it was made for VR, because I don't know if you've experienced this, but with VR, a lot of the movement is you look at somewhere, you confirm it, then you teleport there. It's like a fade to black and then fade in. It's It does that even if you're not in VR. So if you're just playing the game standard, you look towards like the right side of the ship, you click whatever to confirm, and then you just fade it to black and then fade back in, and then you're standing there. So it's not like you're free walking around the ship to do stuff like we thought it's just it seems like it's a strange concession that was in there for vr and then they didn't like not do that yeah Yeah. it's that is weird i don't i don't really like that (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh yeah it's it's not something that i was really hyped about before it came out as was documented well i think on this podcast Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's really not something that after i'm like rushing to get uh like i think i've said like you've said uh i think you planted the idea in my head once it goes down on sale or something like that then that's when i'll buy it but since until then you can forget about it yeah yeah i i'm i'm with you it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a it's gonna be fun (laughs) but um yeah one of these days not in a rush no uh, that does it for news, though. So why don't we get back to our Mandoctober schedule of programming where we're rewatching The Mandalorian Season 1. Uh, this week, we got some heavy hitters. We do have some heavy, heavy, heavy hitters. Uh, episodes 3 and Episode 4. Mm-hmm. Episode 3, The Sin, and Episode 4, Sanctuary. Now... Mike, if you recall, if you can wind back 365 days. Wasn't that long ago? Yeah. Maybe a little less, because this was in November, but... Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> what, do you remember, do you recall, like, how you felt about these two episodes? Do, we can start with episode three. Do you remember, like, your general sentiment... Uh, did you enjoy episode three? Like, rewatching it, did it bring back any feelings you thought before did it conflict with any feelings you thought before just ground level episode three well 
I do remember how I felt about both of these episodes uh, before, or right after we watched them the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we're just if we're just talking about episode three right now, I remember really enjoying it. And um, at you know the first time that I watched it back then, uh, oh so long ago, mm-hmm. and <laughs> and honestly, like I still enjoyed it again watching it uh, uh, not a second time, but this time around. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I think the one th- I think I enjoyed it less. I thought it was just a little slower, maybe this time. Sure. Uh, I I think maybe the last time that we talked about this, I was still just like hyped up on it because, as I recall, they released the first two episodes like either on the same day or like within days of one another, and yeah. then it was like a longer. It was like a longer wait for this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I mean, it's a great, it's a great episode. It it, it does a, it does a lot for the Mandalorian's character. Mm-hmm. Um, just the fact that he like goes back to save Baby Yoda. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, I'd like to know what you think about it. Yeah, I I'm on the same page as you. I, I still really enjoyed it. I, it's still one of my favorite episodes of season one. Um, I think yeah. again, Deborah Chow, like brought it for the episode and it gives me so much faith for the obi-wan series um this being my really only ex- like experience with her work but yeah i i think the only thing that's lost revisiting it is the suspense you know because i do think it is slower but i think that's in favor of trying to build that tension of what's going to happen to the child is mando going to go back like yeah knowing what happens yes i do think it feels a little more drawn out um that's probably why mm -hmm. yeah that's probably why it's just because you know what's about to happen yeah and i think like a lot of media when you revisit it things like that happens um but i still think like i really like how the episode builds still like even if it is slow to get there i really really like how it all comes together in the end and like the group of the mandalorians defending and like helping dinjarin and the child escape like that is super that still hit for me that was really cool um totally the entire sequence of mando sneaking through the base i still really liked like him stealthing through but like behind the boxes and stuff like that with all the stormtroopers like i I still liked the set pieces of the show this episode a lot and i think it's still a very strong episode but i'm with you that pace wise it definitely felt a little slower than it was initially when it was like episode three what's gonna happen next you know you know honestly christian like i didn't really consider that you made a really good point in the sense that like uh you know we we know what happens so that kind of takes away from suspense and like the 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 drama of it in a way Mm -hmm. um but I, I do I do like this episode. I think there are a lot of like different cool uh, set pieces, like you said. I also think there is like an interesting little like mini arc in the series with like Dinjarin and like the Mandalorian as like the Mandalorians as like a people mm-hmm. and like their acceptance of him in mm-hmm. a way. Um, and I think that kind of like helps him realize that he needs to help others. I just think it's very poetic. I think it's very nice. I think it's very like cool and it's not without its it's it's not lacking in like action or anything uh which i think is partially what i like about a lot of these things so um yeah i think it's like overall very well rounded and i and i like it a lot so yeah i I like that you point that out about it because honestly i i think if memory serves in most of our reviews of season one I, I was using episode three as like the standard, I think. Like, I really like episode four and we'll get to that, but I, I do think in terms of the day-to-day, week-to-week episodes, I was comparing it a lot, at least in my head, to the structure and what happens in episode three. And yeah. I, I, I think there's a reason for that. <laughs> and I, it's a lot of the points that you're bringing up of like, just what it does for Mando, what it does for the relationships between the cast we're familiar with so far, um, the action set pieces, uh, the suspense and stuff like that. So I think what you said well-rounded, I think that's a very nice way to put it because there is downtime, but it's in service of something, you know? Totally. 
I totally agree with you. I mean, I just think it's a um, yeah, I, like I said before, I think it's a really well-rounded episode. And I think, like you said previously, uh, I agree with you. It gives me a lot of hope for Deborah Chow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was your favorite moment coming back to this one? Um, favorite moment coming back to this one. Honestly, I just think it's really cool when he like busts through uh, the client's like base. Mm-hmm. It just like torches that like one stormtrooper and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just think that's a really cool moment. He just like kicks ass and the. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just cool. What about you? Uh, I like the showdown sort of at the end, like with grief cargo, and then uh. Man. It, it's that just... was like a number two for me, right? There. Yeah, it's really good. And then like <laughs> how that leads into the ending, the escape. That's like that's just such a good Star Wars moment. I feel like like nailing a good escape like a narrow escape in a star wars piece of media it's always great like fallen order does that uh empire is like the perfect example of it but it, i love it solo solo for sure mm-hmm. no it's it's very good it's very good yeah uh so episode four sanctuary yeah uh this one again roll back maybe 340 days i don't know <laughs> um this one was divisive between you and i no not between just we between, were we were on between like, the fandom yeah amongst the fandom at least on twitter i saw a lot of hate for episode four it's like man it's so boring but like i love this episode i still do i still love this episode uh and i have some reasons why what, hit uh, me with it. yeah i just think um it's interesting coming from me like people who are familiar with this podcast know that like when we were talking about these episodes uh first you know when they were coming out back in like november and december i was sort of like lambasting the fact that it seemed as though there wasn't overarching direction Mm -hmm. and that like the episodes were sort of like like compartmentalized and contained which like i wasn't super like interested in but this episode is like that but it's it is my favorite out of all all of them Mm -hmm. uh but and it seems like it's it's the most just like (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. or it's the first one that's like that uh and the mandalorian's character and his relationship with the child Mm -hmm. um i think it shows that you know the mandalorian has a choice in all of this like he could he could leave the child here and not care about him he could stay and like risk it all uh and, and like you know be with this widow or this woman uh but he he doesn't do any of that he, instead he chooses the noble path which is to stick to the mission mm-hmm. which i i think is is good for his character it shows it shows some things um i also just think that the uh, interaction that they have with cara dune is fun yeah uh, and also uh who who doesn't love a good training montage oh absolutely yeah <laughs> those are my reasons for love there's my reasons for loving this uh without much much thought going into the reasons why yeah but, I, I think you brought up a lot of really good points like um i think this is again we touched on this a little bit last week i think um with episode two and i think a year ago i think i also sort of felt the same way of like i think episodes two and four are really important for humanizing dinjarin beyond just like the cool armor which is why we both have a disdain for boba fett right it's like what there's nothing yeah. else there like i i really think this episode is great for that but like the elements like stripping down those elements and what we gain from this episode aside i do think it's still a really entertaining episode of a star wars tv show because it's adapting sort of a classic uh story arc format that you've seen in like uh westerns uh i've seen anime do this like hero comes to village they're defenseless saves village saves village (laughs) from a group of raiders uh drifts away at the end like it's just such a quintessentially like a basic form of storytelling but it's effective you know and totally i i do really like it i like sort of grounding star wars 
again to some not like archaic story arc but like again very basic in structure that helps ground it helps uh humanize the protagonist and really i think is the best example from memory of the entire first season doing a job of the week type thing like it's it's effective, it gets in, it does what it has to do. We have takeaways for the characters, the cast, and moving forward. And I think that's just so strong, even if it is slow again, because I really like building on things. Yeah, I didn't mind the fact that this one's really that slow, just because it did, I think it did a lot for the characters, like you just mentioned and outlined. Uh, I, Yeah, man, I just, I don't know. There's something about this one. It, I also just like, I, I sort of like this the spare the spare sort of setting as mm-hmm. well like it doesn't move that much it, it seems like it just takes place in just one little spot for the most part uh and i don't know it's just very simple like you said uh star wars i think at its best is just when it's simple and mm-hmm. it's kind of stripped down to those like basic story beats uh so yeah it's just it's just a good episode overall uh mm-hmm. Also, not without its, its action. That's for sure. oh yeah, like the the ATST. That's that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one other thing I'll say too, like I think you brought up a good point where like Star Wars is at its best when it's simple. Like Episode Four is again, it worked because it is going for that very very basic story structure, you know. And I, I think. When I said episode four, I meant a new hope, but like episode four of Mando as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is chasing the similar sort of, we're inspired by a classic structure of like a samurai film or a Western, and we're making it work here. So, yeah, I really like it. Again, Bryce Dallas Howard did this one. Uh, she is returning to do another episode for season two. I'm, I think out the gate, that's the one I'm really interested to see again, because I still think she did a really good job with this episode. Um, and I think so far, it's still out of the four we've watched for Mando October. I think it's still my favorite. It's interesting. It feels like it feels like every, and I'm just like thinking kind of ahead now. It feels like a lot of these episodes, like Man- the Mandalorian, sort of like dealing with a different sort of like temptation, you know, like to to sort of pry him away from Baby Yoda and like the task. Mm-hmm. And I think this one does a really good job at like showing like the intimacy of this place you know like it's a very like lush and like green area and like they even say in the show that they want to stay there for a while but the mandalorian is like nah like (laughs) Mm -hmm. like they're they're looking for us you know uh it's just interesting to like it's just interesting to see bryce dallas howard i think she did a good job conveying that like that sort of like temptation that he has of like lust and like complacency i guess um in this place yeah but he, does, he doesn't choose to, to take it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's cool. Yeah, very good point. Um, and I think that will probably continue with the next episode because uh, episode five, if you remember, is The Gunslinger, which uh, I think... Yes. I don't know if it was divisive like episode four was, but I know... I think from our discussion in the past, we're both a little mixed on this one coming up. I remember personally being a bit mixed on this one. Yeah. So uh, next week, we will be watching The Gunslinger and The Prisoner. Now, if I remember correctly, I enjoyed The Prisoner episode. But that's just because I love heist things. So we'll see how that goes. I remember being sort of like a little sour on The Prisoner episode for some reason. Mm -hmm. But like looking, remember, like thinking back on it, all I can remember is just like really cool moments. Um, so I'm excited to watch that one again perhaps perhaps I'll have different feelings mm-hmm. um, this just reminded me of this because of thinking of the prisoner episode but in terms of like just the way all these episodes are shot and like visually how it all works together like I really appreciate that the first two episodes of the Mandalorian from last week were like it, they felt Star Wars-y um they felt like the right color palette like browns and blues and things like that but like lots of warm or like not even warm but like dirty you know like new hope 
uh episode three lots of darks like grays and blues really like changing the tone and then like what you said about this new one being so refreshing and like greens and lots of lush colors and everything like i really think this is a beautifully shot star wars content and um <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so whatever we get next with the new season i'm still very excited for because i think that was our or at least one of my biggest takes on when we finally got that season two trailer of like man i just missed looking at the mandalorian scenes like because i think it just the way that it's, it's shot the way it looks just looks great big fan <laughs> Man, I just love looking at it. Yeah. That, that <laughs> no, is, I agree. That, that's half the experience. It it is. Yeah. I I, I think. Um, hey, man, you don't want to watch a TV show that looks bad, right? Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> I don't blame you. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on these two episodes? Um, The Mandalorian is a good show. Yeah. That's it. Holds up. Uh, we'll see how the next uh, it holds up. I think if anything next week will probably be the weaker one just comparing it to the original run of the show because um, that that last two episode chunk before we get into the new season if memory serves that's going to hit so uh, look forward to that are you saying 7 and 8? yeah 7 and 8 are going to hit totally yeah but uh, Mike Without a doubt. Oh. <laughs> until next week where can the listeners find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mike P. Connors. Very nice. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Twitch, it's at Chris N. Buckley. This show is available on YouTube. YouTube.com slash EnjoyClicks is where you are if you're looking at us right now. Uh, we have a variety of other shows on the channel and other videos that go up throughout the week. Uh, like I mentioned, Gamescast from October 10th. Ninth, I believe, is where you can check out Kevin's impressions of Star Wars Squadrons if you want more in-depth thoughts of that. Um, but the show is also available on podcast services, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all the things that you'd expect it to be on. It is there under Jedi Knights. If you can rate or review the show on that platform, it would be greatly appreciated because it helps the show out a ton. Just takes a second to Please. click the five stars, and uh, we appreciate it. We also have a patreon patreon.com slash joy clicks it's where you can go to support the shows get involved with the shows at the one two or five dollar tier two dollar tier gets you involvement to submit questions two shows all shows and five dollar tier gets you producer credit like chris sakas and aaron easton so thank you both but mike any final words before we uh go back into the hollow net uh, i hope you have a good week christian and uh i hope everyone listening has a good week and I can't wait to return to talk about uh, what I remember were the least, the, the weakest of all of the Mandalorian episodes, but the ones that I'm looking forward to watching the most. So let's do this thing. Absolutely. And here's hoping <laughs> within the next week, I'm feeling like a new Star Wars thing. Like, I don't want to get excited, but I'm just in my gut, I'm feeling over the next seven days, a new thing will be introduced to the fandom. If I were a betting man, Christian, which I'm not, mm-hmm. I would uh, I would agree with you. I would put money on it. Excellent. Well, let's do it. We'll see what happens. But until then, <laughs> we're fine. Everything's fine. How are you? May the force be with you. Hello there. This is where the fun begins. General Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs>